Shit. Peace, family. It's your boy King Obatuna. I'm back again with another episode. Today, I have a wonderful guest with me. This is Ray Kimabazi. Hello, everyone. And we are going to be discussing a uh, cultural um, vlog today, a little bit about uh, tribalism here in Uganda, because me as a black American, I don't really have an understanding of what tribes really mean to people here in Africa. And I don't understand like uh, the differences between certain tribes or why they have conflicts or why they have uh, understanding with one tribe versus um, they don't have an understanding with another tribe. So without you know any further waiting, I'm gonna go ahead and get right into the uh, episode and I'm gonna have Ray elaborate a little bit more about tribes and help me get, gain a better understanding of what it means to have a tribe here in Uganda. Okay, so tribes, I would say first of all, Uganda has 54 tribes. Mm -hmm. They could even be more than that. Mm -hmm. Many of the tribes in Uganda are Bantu, Bantu people. Yeah. They all begin with BA. Baganda, Banyankole, uh -huh. Bachiga, Batoro, most of them, not all of them, Bagisu, Basoga. Right. And then you also have tribes like from the Nilo the north, yeah. especially the ones from northern Uganda, uh -huh. maybe who came through Sudan into Uganda. Okay. The Acholi so, are part of that, right? Yeah, the Acholi, Acholi. the Langi, the okay. Japadola in the eastern. There are so, so many tribes in Uganda. You guys and even the tribe, have Luo here. The Luo as well, who are mm -hmm. also in Kenya as mm -hmm. well. So the Karamajong who are completely different, you know, okay. the nomads, you know, the Urea Kato and things oh, like yeah, that. Okay, yeah. okay. So tribes are very many in Uganda mm -hmm. and each tribe has its own language. So there are very many local languages in Uganda. Okay. The commonest is the one that we have here in central Uganda, which is Luganda. And then maybe that the language from the Western Uganda are also common because they're kind of the same. Yeah. They're just a little bit different, but they're yeah. almost the same. Yeah. So sometimes people feel like they are more comfortable with people of their tribe, I mm -hmm. should say. Mm -hmm. For example, I come from the Western Uganda. When okay. I came to Kampala, I didn't grow up in Kampala in the city. Okay. I didn't know the local language here, which is Luganda. Okay. So just like you, mm -hmm. I also had to learn Luganda. Oh. The difference is Luganda is related to my local language, yeah. my mother language. So it okay. was easy for me to pick it up. So when people say tribalism, mm. sometimes it's easier to associate with people of your tribe because okay. it's like a natural flow, I should say. Okay. It's like when they say people from the south in the U.S., I hear you guys say like mm. people from, from the, the south, south yeah. you know, like the main cook, someone told me something about that. Or maybe have your own accent so you easily okay. meet yourselves. Or hear people from the east coast or the west coast. I'm not saying it's a tribal thing, mm. but sometimes you tend to relate easier to people who come from the same area, okay. like where you come from. In okay. terms of language, because if I'm in Kampala, if I meet someone who speaks my same language, mm. sometimes you just find laughing about certain things because you just switch from English to your local language, yeah. which comes like so naturally to me because English is not my first language anyway. Okay. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's a bit about tribes. All right, language. so let me ask you, how, in your own opinion, do you feel, how do you feel tribalism affects your country? Well, that's quite a tricky question, mm -hmm. but I would say definitely Ugandans have expressed a tribalism as a concern mm -hmm. in Uganda, and I would say because of the current president, mm -hmm. uh, this is just people's opinions, uh, this is not like anything official or I'm just talking generally of how Ugandans mm -hmm. sometimes have felt, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so Museveni comes from Western Uganda mm -hmm. in um, maybe his Amunyankole or Mihima, that is like a tribe from Western yeah, Uganda. Rwandese. The ones who have, a lot, or maybe his Rwandese. It's a mixture. Actually, it's a cocktail of things, mm -hmm. you know. It could even be from Rwanda, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are so many Rwandese who blended into Uganda. Mm -hmm. and it's, they're all Ugandans, mm -hmm. but they originally came from Rwanda. Okay. Some came from Congo, you know. They all became Ugandans. Okay. But he's from Western Uganda. So some at times people have felt that people from the Western Uganda have occupied a number of influential government positions mm -hmm. because over the time the president who is from Western Uganda maybe has given gave opportunities maybe to in a way I can't articulate it so well mm -hmm. but in a way because he was in power and when he was going to the bush maybe he recruited more of his village mates okay. to I go to the you. bush okay. of his people from school mm -hmm. so when they won over the war and took over the country mm -hmm. the generals the people he fought with mm -hmm. most of them are from the western part of the country they took over the country mm -hmm. so they got these government positions maybe they are generals in the military got you know military positions mm -hmm. and they are very influential so since for over 30 years if people have been in power meaning they've accumulated a certain amount of money mm -hmm. you know so maybe they've also 
brought their relatives you know to the city and bought some land you know and got some government jobs so ugandans have expressed that some big positions maybe a good number of them are occupied from people from western uganda okay. that's what they, when they say tribalism in uganda most of the times that's what they are hinting towards I got you. because okay. museveni has is from the west and has been in power for so long and maybe they felt like he okay. brought so many people to the central yeah something like that all right so mm -hmm. tribalism isn't really something that could be taken in a bad way but it could also be taken in a bad way from the outside looking in mm -hmm. is that true because the reason why i'm asking is like mm -hmm. i see that some people do take pride in their tribe now i don't think there's anything wrong with that mm -hmm. but once again as a black american i really don't understand mm -hmm. why there could be any kind of conflict because i see everybody as africans you get what i'm saying i i, I don't really see the tribe <clears throat> first but mm -hmm. i notice here people either see your family your family name or your clan first or your mm -hmm. tribe first and if they don't like that specific tribe that you're from mm -hmm. They might treat you a little bit differently versus how they might treat you if they do like the tribe that you're from. So one, I think it's up to an individual to be proud of their tribe, you know where they come from. Mm -hmm. But personally, I don't like it. I have met people who meet me up front mm -hmm. and they say, where do you come from? Which tribe are you? I'll never answer that question. That's just uh... the reason being, sometimes people tend to judge you of your tribe, mm -hmm. Ugandans. This happens to me all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. People look at you and be like, oh, you're from this district. Oh, you come from this side of the country. Okay. I'll be like, no, I come from Kampala. I'm born here, you know? Because mm -hmm. people tend to judge you by where you come from. Okay. People, by the people, Ugandans have certain beliefs about, tri mm -hmm. <laughs> about tribes as well. I don't know if you've come across those. They, ha they, they have like things about Watoro. They'll say like Watoro uh, are very polite, for uh -huh. example. Uh -huh. Uh, they are very slow in their talking. Uh -huh. They don't say things straightforward. They'll say like my tribe, the Bachiga, we say things straightforward. You've mm -hmm. been to Kawali, the Bachiga mm -hmm. people. Straightforward, rough, aggressive. Mm -hmm. If if they like you, they will, they'll tell you I like you. If they don't, they'll tell you I don't like you. Like, mm -hmm. straightforward. So that's characteristic is touched to Bachiga people. Okay. So people have certain things that they relate to their tribes. For example, I say Baganda cook the best food. Mm -hmm. I kind of agree with that. Okay. <laughs> they say Waganda are good at cooking, you mm -hmm. know, the food. Mm -hmm. So people have certain things they say about certain tribes in Uganda. Okay. And sometimes they want to judge you off your tribe. Right. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I can understand that. So, okay, um, another thing I want to ask is like, uh, mm -hmm. for black Americans like myself, mm -hmm. for us who want to come back to Africa, would we be considered like Africans or would we only be considered like Americans, foreigners? You get what I'm saying? Like, and would I be looked at as another African who's returning home, or am I always just going to be a foreigner? So it depends who you're interacting with. Mm -hmm. Like, if you tell people, if I look at you, just by looking at you, you're African. That's mm -hmm. how I look at you, because you're okay. the same skin color, you're black, the same hair texture, like, you look like us, it's the same. Mm -hmm. So I see you the same, you know, because we know you came from Africa. Mm -hmm. But because of your accent, so your accent, just your way of style, just by looking at you, I'll tell you not Ugandan. Just at the face of it. Got you. Not because of the way you look, mm -hmm. but because of the way you dress. Okay. Because of the way you talk. My tattoos. Even the tattoos as well. Okay. Even even when you interact, I can tell this is not a Ugandan, you understand? Yeah. So unfortunately that cut thing will always be there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to articulate these things in English. That's, no, I understand what yeah, you mean. Yeah, like it will always, people will always look at you like, oh, they'll be like, oh, I believe they experienced that. Oh, like, okay, yeah. he has this cool accent, yeah. he has this cool accent, is like so cool. <laughs> but I always wondered, like, will people yeah. actually accept me, though? It's one thing for them to Do you look at me accepted? and be prejudged. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I feel tolerated. And the reason why okay. I say that is because... Do you feel your friends have accepted you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like okay, my friends, friends yes, definitely. My friends, yes. But yeah. when it comes to, like, interacting with other people and mm -hmm. doing business and whatnot, I feel like because I was born somewhere else, they tolerate me more than they would with other people. And I've noticed that because, like, for example, if there's a white man and me in the same room, mm -hmm. they're definitely going to want to go to the white man first, and they're going to want to go see what he's Just about so first. Him, yeah. Now... When it comes to me, I'm a black American, they mm -hmm. tolerate me. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. they'll interact with me, they'll talk to me, and they, but when they start sensing that I'm not on that same level as this, this white man or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. they'll start to 
shift a little bit. You get what I'm saying? I see the, the attention. The attention, yeah, the attention, the conversation, their energy mm -hmm. will begin to shift. Mm -hmm. And sometimes not shifting in a good way. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I pick up on those things sometimes. I'm like, you know what? I don't know if it's because, you know, I'm a black American or is it, if it's because I'm a foreigner or what the case may be. Yeah, so I think it's because you are a foreigner. But I also think that Ugandans, I just blame this on the education system. This mm. is just my personal opinion. Mm. I think Uganda is, like, our education system is still colonized, you know, the way they teach us at school. Okay. It's all colonized. Uh -huh. So right from primary, they will teach you that, oh, Bazungu are rich, they are so cool, they have money, they are better than us. That's what the education teaches us. Okay. So that's why I'm going to walk into a Ugandan restaurant and the mzungu walks in, but a Ugandan waiter or waitress is going to attend to the mzungu first before me. You mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. Because it's how the minds are programmed. I don't know if you get my point. No, I get what you're saying. Like, that's how it is, you know? It's like indoctrination. I yeah, yeah exactly. And that's something that can change over the time, you know? Because okay. it means our people have to be educated differently, mm -hmm. you know? If you are at school, the history that we are teaching the kids and all, it has to change right from home, you know. Mm -hmm. The parents have to say you are as good as they are or even better than them they are. So you respect yourself first. Yeah. That you are better than them, you know. Okay. So they, that hasn't been input in us right from when we were growing younger. I they made you. us feel like they are so cool, they are all this and that and that. So that's a problem. Really. So for other black Americans who, who decide to come here, mm -hmm. is that something that they should be concerned with? Like, is that something that we should be worried about or not that's really. just not really a big deal? Not really. It's not a big deal. Okay. Reason being, Ugandans are very friendly to foreigners. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I'll tell you off of it. Mm -hmm. So you won't experience like, okay, Sometimes they'll try to overcharge you when you yeah. get a border border, a motorcycle. Because yeah. they'll think you don't know the price. They'll take, mm -hmm. try to take advantage of that. These are just businessmen. Mm -hmm. But in general, when you make friends and you interact with people, mm -hmm. I don't think you found your friends trying to like avoid you or make you feel like you are... Mm -hmm. the, instead, they'll try to make you settle in and blend in. Yeah. So that's not a problem. But I think if someone also wants to come, they should just come with an open mind. If you have this idea of maybe just come with an open mind, mm -hmm. don't have too many high expectations. Definitely. You just have to be open-minded and be ready to know that things are just not the way they have been in America or any other country okay. that you're coming from. Yeah. Um, so one thing I did want to mention also is that I see that Uganda is a very uh, mixed community and there's a lot of uh, immigrants here in this country. Yes, from very It's a many. huge uh, East African community here. Yeah, so very many. I wanted to know, in your politics, mm. are there only Ugandans, like in your uh, Ugandan politicians, or do they allow like um, other foreigners who've been here for a certain amount of time to be into the, the politics as well? So from what time? Okay, we have very many immigrants. I believe mm -hmm. you saw them today. Very many Eritreans, mm -hmm. Sudanese, mm -hmm. Somalis. Mm -hmm. Very many. Uganda is like this country in East Africa that everyone just runs to mm -hmm. if they have instabilities in their country. Exactly, they come here. Yes, they come here as refugees. So they have a refugee document. They yeah. are not citizens. Okay. They are given residence mm -hmm. because of instability, like in Congo, in Somalia, mm -hmm. in Sudan. Mm -hmm. So we have very many of them here in Uganda. And we've welcomed them, and they're very settled here. Actually, there's a place in town that is specifically for Somalis. I should take you oh, there I, one I, I time. I think I know you're talking about, you've, too. You've been there. There's areas where I call them Little Somalia, or I yes. call them Little Eritrea, yeah. or Little Ethiopia. Yeah, there's exactly. There's a lot of little villages We have around. those places, like there's where foreigners... There's even Little Sudan out here, too. Yeah. <laughs> but... They have come and taken Isn't shelter into Katwe? the country. Yes, there is one near country, Ikatwe, even in Kabalagala, even Kabalagala, in Kseng. Yeah. Kseng is specifically Kseng. for Somalia. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. So, they are not... Okay, I don't know what the law says, but mm. I've not seen very many foreigners who are in leadership positions unless they have been here for a very very long time okay so i know like for example dr ian clark he's mm -hmm. an irishman he has been in uganda for very many years mm -hmm. where maybe like in the 19 maybe 50s or whatever okay so he has he has been in leadership positions like mm -hmm. a local lc5 chairperson or lc3 okay. Western division in kampala okay so he's ugandan i believe he's uh, like a ugandan passport holder okay but he's been here for a very long time but not even that but he's a mzungu he's a mzungu yes okay. he's an irishman he's but 
because leadership people have to vote for you mm -hmm. so if you are a somali and you stand you might not stand chance to be getting voted for mm -hmm. than a muganda who has grown up in the community exactly. and they understand the issue because leadership is about service right. and people need a leader who can represent them so if majority are ugandans they mm -hmm. might not vote a somali because they feel somali won't represent them and their issues that i can understand yeah but okay. Maybe if it's like in a certain LC of Somalis, like LC1, mm -hmm. where there are very many settled there, it's possible that a Somali could be the LC1. Okay. Yeah. So would we at least be allowed, like, let's say I have children and my children want to grow up to be like a lawyer mm -hmm. or something like that. They, do they allow us to be in law at all? Or is there like certain fields that they do not allow foreigners to be in? You can be in any field, okay. I believe. Yes. So if you settled in Uganda and got married and had kids here, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, your kids are Ugandan, so they can be whatever they want to be. They can be okay. a lawyer, a doctor, they can be a politician, okay. anything I believe that they want to be. Okay, that's yeah, cool, that's absolutely. cool. I think they can. And um, I think my last question I want to ask you is about like mm -hmm. other black Americans like myself, mm -hmm. or just Africans that are born outside of Africa. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for us to return to Africa mm -hmm. and gain some kind of citizenship, like... Um, not like a, a, a residency, mm. but an actual... Get a passport and be a Ugandan. Exactly. And be accepted as a Ugandan, not mm. as a foreigner who got a passport or something of that nature. You get what I'm saying? Like naturalized rights or something of that nature. Do you think that'll ever happen? So do you mean according to the law or do you mean people accepting you as individuals? Both. So if you can answer in both ways. So according okay. to the law. So according to the law... The laws, I think Uganda, I don't know what the requirements are, but you have to have been here for so many years. Mm -hmm. I believe you should know them since mm -hmm. so you've done a bit of research mm -hmm. for you to be given a Ugandan passport. A passport, you either a citizenship or a residency. You have to apply for both, either a certain amount of money you have to pay, mm -hmm. or you have to be here for a certain amount of years. Yeah, I know citizenship is not easy. It must be a good amount of years yeah. before they give you a citizenship. That you have to prove what you've been doing in this yeah. entire time, what yeah. is beneficial for them to even give you a citizenship here, yes. and all that. Yeah, for us, getting residence is a bit easier. Mm -hmm. But what I can say, I think it's important to settle and find your community if you choose to settle in Uganda. Okay, you know, make relations with people, you know, do find a business that you like to do, do it. So, you because it's one thing, yes, you could be settled in by law. Mm -hmm. But it's also important to feel settled in because, in my opinion, the opportunities that we do have, they are applicable to foreigners as well. Mm -hmm. I believe foreigners have even taken advantage of our country more than us because mm -hmm. the laws are even favoring foreign investors more than citizens themselves. Same way so I would say, instead of focusing on, oh my God, I don't have a passport, I don't feel Ugandan, mm -hmm. if you are here and you are given residence, do things to make you feel a resident. Okay. But I believe, because this is a new thing, mm -hmm. you're the first person I know has settled in Uganda that is African American. Mm -hmm. okay. So if the government is just hearing it for the first time, I don't think they will change the law immediately. Of course. I don't even know if there is a bill before parliament. Oh. Because it has to be discussed before parliament. Okay. And they pass okay. the bill. So I don't know if there is a bill. I don't know if there is an organization of African Americans in Uganda that we have maybe contacted a lawyer and say let's table a bill and it will be discussed before parliament, you mm. know. So, maybe so this is that something one. that can be worked on. Yeah. But I think if you choose to settle in a country, mm. because foreigners are accepted in Uganda and mm. they're going to live a good life, as good as the Uganda, not even better, in my opinion. So don't over focus on oh I don't have a passport, I don't have this because whether you have a passport or not, the conditions of the country and the things that you can do or can't do, like you can still access them mm. even without a passport. Okay. You can still do your business, you know, you can still buy land, you can still do everything that you can even without a passport. Okay. But if you've chosen to settle, then with time, mm -hmm. as you work upon these things, because I believe that's not a decision that the government is going to pass in one year, yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. So it's that has to be given time, definitely. But I would say, in my personal opinions, African Americans are African, you know, they were taken away from us. So absolutely, they should be accepted into okay. the country and be given citizenship. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do you have any uh, final thoughts for my subscribers before we go ahead and close the video up? Well, I would say, I think if someone is interested, come in, interested in settling in Uganda, mm -hmm. it's good to first do a visit mm -hmm. and they see how they feel about the country. Okay. King Obutunda is here. Mm -hmm. Call him or you Definitely. can call me. 
we can take you around Uganda, show you all the cool stuff. <laughs> he's now like Uganda, and he has more friends than me, actually. <laughs> and he's having a much of a better time in Uganda than me, the Ugandan. Like, that's how good it is for you guys. So, <laughs> so okay. Um. Yeah, so I think that's the thing. Come experience the country. Mm. Go to Tanzania, experience. Go to Kenya, experience. Whatever Should we be you worried like. about that tribalism stuff? Should we not be concerned really, with that? Not really. Everyone will love you. You're okay. so cool. Okay. They'll just love you guys. Nothing to worry about you. All right. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming out okay. and being on my channel. Okay. Thank You're you a lot for that. Okay. All right, family. So at this time, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. I hope you guys learned a little bit of information. You can follow Ray at her channel. It's a Ray Kemabazi. I'm going to leave a link down in the description section. So please, at the end of this video, go ahead and check it out now. And I'll leave a link for our, our social media as well, right? Instagram? Yes, yes. So I'll leave her Instagram and her YouTube as well. So if you are new to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe now. Leave a like and a comment and let me know how, you, how we've done in this video. Leave any kind of uh, feedback. Let me know if you have any questions about tribalism here in Uganda or any questions for Ray. And I can give that to her. All right, so everybody else, y'all have a great and wonderful day. Peace.